2.2 just released and Robtop dropped 5 new controversial levels, so are they godlike or terrible? Let's find out. First is Dash, and it starts off great but gets a whole lot worse later. Aside from this spider sequence, which is the worst thing Rob has created since the deadlocked wave, the gameplay is very dynamic and sight readable, however I understand the complaints that this level would be very hard to understand. At least the decoration is amazing with lots of details like this monster Nick Cage. Also a very fairly telegraphed first coin. Everything sinks so well, especially this final clip. Now, time for the controversial swing part. People have given this criticism for being the worst reveal of a game mode, but I disagree. You can take a nice dip in the spa, and you've got enough time to dodge the crystal spikes. The gameplay may be boring, but I understand considering this is the introduction and Robtop doesn't want to throw too much at the player. What I actually have an issue with is these skull dudes and these electric fireball laser thingies. I sure hope you like them, because Robtop will be pasting them everywhere. The sync for this part is... Okay. At least this underwhelming part is followed up by a clean transition which syncs well and actually does a solid job at introducing the walking on walls mechanic. I thought this was a portal to Bloodbath, but nah, it's just the only custom designed game mode portal for some reason. Sadly, this is the last good part before it becomes obvious that Robtop rushed this level out. For example, this is just ball clicks in a boring cavern. Now, here's my least favorite part of the level. All the actual solid decoration is far away from where your eyes should be looking. Now, this is an air decoration. It it's air decoration. This coin just makes me realize how annoying the swing physics are gonna be. Then there's another underwhelming spider part, but finally, I can start being positive again. While the decoration is still mid, this dash warp transition is fire, and the gameplay is pretty fun. This next part is so hype, it almost made me forget the gameplay is just the icon jumping over these gaps. Then you turn into a fireball. If you spam click during this part, you get a coin for some reason. There's no way to tell that this coin exists, and Robtop probably added it for the zoomers that get bored after 2 seconds. The transition is sick, but sadly this drop is where the level completely falls off. This part has no energy, and everything is copy pasted. Robtop made a level with a far better drop than this over 9 years ago. I guess the propellers are cool, shout out to air power. Finally, a part I can be positive about. The sync is great, and it makes the gameplay feel satisfying to pull off. Although, the decoration remains mid, and this part was so rush that someone found a secret way in it day one. Overall, this level peaked very early, fell off, and then wasn't able to get back up. Normally in my level reviews, I have an originality score, but with Robtop specifically, it doesn't make sense because pretty much every level he's ever made, except Can't Let Go, introduces something game changing. This level gets a maximum originality score by default. Dash, you're a good level and all, but you can be boring, empty, filled with copy paste, and annoying. Maybe we could be friends. The Tower! The other new Robtop levels are platformers. Unlike normal Geometry Dash levels, you have the freedom to go to the left. Move it right now, y'all. Which means scoring sync no longer makes sense, but I came up with a good replacement. Sound design. That's right, Geometry Dash's new sound effects library adds a whole other layer to the immersion of these levels, and if there's a new feature that Robtop used to perfection, it's this one. Every object in Robtop's platformer levels makes a noise, and it's awesome. Even little things like the poison water flow, the poison water bubbles, and the surfaces you stuck on. Sadly, every other aspect of this level is not as good. The decoration is like a Mario level, where you know what to expect. It's average and has some nice details. Besides, it wouldn't make sense for a level like this to be a 900,000 object masterpiece. Oh hey, there's another monster in a cage. I wonder if this is the last one we'll see. Weirdly enough, the best looking part is this ending that doesn't even have gameplay. Talking about gameplay, for an introduction to the platformer mode, it's understandably nothing crazy. This part was confusing because at first I thought the gears hurt you, but that's my only complaint. Until we meet Camera Head. With 2.2 now out, speedrunning will be very popular in the Geometry Dash community, but this level is dreadful to speedrun. Every attempt, you have to go through this long out cutscene, and if that's not bad enough, it's followed up by you having to precisely enter the small gap in this door right as it opens. You may think criticizing a level for not being speedrunnable is unfair, but one of the secret coins is locked behind a timer that continues to increase while the cutscene happens. The other two secret coins are okay, I guess. It's uncreative, but the two blue coins hiding in walls are hinted at, and this blue coin is easy to reach. The gold coins are also fine. The tower may be mid, but can we get much higher? Nope, we're in the sewers now, eh, Luigi? Then this random robot dude says hi and dips. Immediately, we're blessed with the orchestrational genius of Kevin MacLeod. <laughs> the decoration and gameplay are nothing crazy. Yes. Bro! I don't know what Rob's thing is with monsters and cages. At this point, this is pretty much GDSM. Luckily for the monster, he subscribed to me and liked this video, so I had to free the homie. This is easily my favorite coin route. The other two blue coins are alright, I guess. I thought this level was gonna be easy, but after this dude says, FIRE IN THE HOLE, I was a dead cube walking. 
God, no, dude. Oh my God, what? That's actually difficult. No! Now, normally I wouldn't mark points off for a level being too hard, but for some reason, platformer levels do not have practice mode and they have to use these checkpoints. Because of that, every time I died to Big Mouth over here, I had to start back from the bottom. Come on! Fuck! Once I learned it, this boss fight was really fun though. The decoration takes a huge step up in this part, and the intensity of this part combined with the soundtrack hits different. The boss was super satisfying to defeat. Okay, pay attention to the spikes. Get that. Yeah, get that, get that, get that. That. Yes! But I'm not gonna lie, this sound gave me war flashbacks. I can already tell no practice mode is going to make platformer extreme demons very annoying, so I hope that gets added in 2.21 or whatever, but for now, we shall advance forth into the cellar. After breaking into Camera Head's crib, we see our first English skeleton dude. Well met! As usual, it's weird, but at this point, I realized that the weirdness of everything was what made it so awesome. Rob Top's levels have a lot more charm now, and unlike Tinder, I play these levels for the personality. While the decoration is bare bones, this cellar has some of the most fun and consistent gameplay yet. Bro, thank you, Mario Castle. Now, there's like, still a cutscene that would definitely be annoying for speedrunners, but for the average game. player, it's great. So here's an idea. I think creators should add a speedrun toggle, which turns off cutscenes so casuals can enjoy the story, while speedrunners can sweat the world record. Anyways, after camera head did this English skeleton dude starts yapping, so I did this. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this level, bro? <laughs> See what I mean? Rob Top levels have so much charm now. Bombing English skeletons was not on my 2.2 bingo card. Unlike the second level, the cellar doesn't have an annoying difficulty spike and it remains fun. The decoration also improves significantly in this part. While two of the blue coins are just hidden walls, the third one is pretty interesting. And if you're paying attention, you should be able to notice that jumping here lowers and shatters the glass. Just don't try this at an expensive glass antique store. Overall, this is a banger. But now we have to talk about the weirdest level yet. This final level is the Secret Hollow. So it starts off pretty normal with Rob Top shamelessly copying Mario. You gotta wait a long time for the blue coin to come down. I'd hate to do an all coin speedrun of this level. Then you go down this awesome piano bridge. After that, we got this Mario Eye transition into what is my only significant critique of Rob Top's sound design. These platforms don't make any noise for some reason. I think Rob forgot. Just like how he forgot to add fire sound effects to the torches after the first level. Don't think I didn't know that. Anyways, segregation has become canon to Geometry Dash. This place is filled with ball lovers and cube haters. Now I'm the one in the cage. It's truly fascinating that Rob used Geometry Dash as a vehicle to portray his critiques against America's prison industrial complex. When you go to prison, the most important thing in your life is going to be 2.2. This next part has a ton of creative gimmicks and the ball machine goes hard as fuck. A little critique is that this level once again has two blue coins hidden in the walls, but at least one of them requires some brain power to get. Then we break into a Pac-Man maze. I think it would have been a bit cooler if it leaned more into the gimmick, like maybe the atmosphere changes and the music becomes a bit. This next maze part has some pretty interesting bugs. But now finally, after this maze, we get to the big bad of this update. The Curse Thorn! Now I have a love-hate relationship with this boss fight. Just like the sewer, the lack of practice mode makes this part feel a lot more frustrating than fair. Especially when you miss a fireball or die due to a surprising gimmick. How was I meant to know?! The AI for this dude was way too smart. Are you serious?! The decoration is kinda empty, but to be honest, I wasn't able to focus on that while playing the level anyway. Nothing on me. Oh. We got right here, we got right here. No man, stop missing! Stop. Oh Why'd I miss? Why did just What I was focused on was the sink. Yeah, this platformer level sinks great and the music is very intense. Yeah. Destroying this cornball was extremely satisfying. Come on, one more shot! Yes! Let's go! Money! Smoking that pack. Overall, Rob Top definitely didn't disappoint with this final level. I'm super excited to make more content on 2.2 and Geometry Dash. I love this game, and I love the community. If you like this video, subscribe!